Do you know someone that needs the saving blood of Jesus Christ to forgive them? Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. Do you need the salvation of Jesus? Well, stay tuned and find out how. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in Search of the Lord's Way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search the Scriptures for God's will. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you're saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Our salvation is of first importance to God, and it should be to us. Have you responded to the gospel? And are you saved by the blood of Jesus? Thanks for taking time with us today. We want to be a part of your life each week. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross was no small matter. Revelation 13 and verse 8 in many versions calls Jesus the Lamb that was slain from the foundation or creation of the world. The Lord Jesus Himself predicted His suffering and death. Matthew 16, 21 to 23 says, From that time Jesus began to show His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Well, Peter took Him aside and began to rebuke Him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But He turned and He said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. For you're not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. Now Peter loved Jesus. He didn't want Him to die. But Peter didn't understand God's purpose in sending Jesus to the cross. We offer this free study, Kneel at the Cross, and it's free to everyone who would ask for one. And if you'd like a printed copy or a CD of our study, and you live in the United States, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also have materials free on our website at searchtv.org. The Edmond Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Titus 3, 3-7, and then we'll explore our need to be saved by the blood of Christ. Our reading today comes from Paul's letter to Titus, dealing with a lot of the problems that took place on the island of Crete. And he talks about the nature of people and our, our salvation. Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, 
hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's a great reading from the book of Titus. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, we're thankful that even when we didn't deserve it, that You were willing to send Your Son to die for us and to be able to save us through the washing of regeneration. Father, help us to love You with all our hearts and to do Your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like Peter, I sometimes wonder how this suffering and cruelty and crucifixion could happen to the Son of God who was so good and so loving. And I want to say, no, this shall never happen to you. But God had a bigger plan than Peter could see. I criticized Pilate for compromising with the Jews over Jesus till I remembered that I've compromised. I became angry at the Sanhedrin for their jealousy and, and hatred till I remember my own jealousies and ill will. I grieved at those who hit Him and scourged Him till I remembered how hurtful my sins must be. I spoke against the ones who mocked Him and wagged their heads till I remembered my own careless words. I despised the self-righteous priests and Pharisees who thought they could overcome Jesus by sending Him to the cross until I remembered my own pride. Isaac Watts wrote in 1707, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gains I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Our society has become willing to dismiss God and His teaching about sin. They easily excuse and justify even the worst of sins. While many people play fast and loose with sin, thinking they can set aside God's values in the Bible for worldly values, and God grieves. We shouldn't expect, however, that His love means that He will tolerate our sins forever, even if we tolerate them. The prophet said about God in Habakkuk 1.13 that your eyes are too pure to approve evil, and you cannot look on wickedness with favor. 
Many have forgotten the cross and have forgotten sin. There were two preachers, postmodern preachers, who were discussing their evangelistic efforts on television. And one was being congratulated that he didn't preach about sin anymore. Well, the assumption was that everyone knows that they're in sin and don't need to be told. And then came this advice. Well, when a man is drowning, you don't describe the water to him. You, you throw him a rope. Well, the audience clapped their hands and cheered their approval. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? But sin destroys, and we need a response to sin. Of course, the response of the postmodern preacher was for people to stand during the invitation and say a brief salvation prayer that uh, with the preacher. Well, nobody ever did that in the New Testament. Ask people to stand and say a prayer, and that's all they ask. No, the process of salvation for them is often cast in this drowning man an analogy. But analogies are often inadequate. First of all, sin in the minds of most people isn't what it used to be. A recent Ellison research survey showed that 13% of Americans did not believe there was any such thing as sin. Recent polls now reveal that many people no longer think a variety of sinful behaviors are even a moral issue. According to the Ellison report, people under age 35 are less likely than Americans in other age groups to believe that adultery or getting drunk or not reporting income on taxes or homosexual activity, pornography, and gossip are sin. At the same time, younger people are more likely than others to say using tobacco and working on the Sabbath are sinful. They found that only 35% of Americans who are not evangelicals thought sex before marriage was sinful. A Gallup poll last year found that 77% of Americans believe that the moral values of our nation are getting worse. They found more people believed wearing clothing made of animal fur was wrong than sex between unmarried, an unmarried man and woman, or having a baby outside of marriage, or homosexual relations. Clearly, many people are no longer willing to accept God's standard of sin. While moral values change in our society, God's morals do not change. Sin takes place when people break God's laws. 1 John 3 and verse 4 says that everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. When people have no respect for God or His teaching and do as they please, they sin against God and they offend Him and He takes notice. Many folks don't think about salvation from sin because they don't know that they're lost. And they don't know the serious consequences of being lost. Others who don't know about Jesus don't want to think about salvation from sin or heaven and hell. Among those who are not aligned with any religion, as many as 32% say sin doesn't even exist. The Bible, however, clearly says that sin exists and points out that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and verse 23. 1 John 1, 8 says that if we say that we have no sin, then we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. Then verse 10 says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make Him, that is Jesus, a liar, and His Word is not in us. Sin is real. And without the forgiveness found in the blood of Jesus, sinners will bear the consequences of their sin. A Lifeway study in 2016 found that 65% of Americans said that everyone sins a little, but most people are good by nature. Well, a great number of people recognize they sin, but don't consider sin a big deal. They don't believe that a few sins will cause them to be lost. The Word of God says in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin is a big deal to God, even if it's not to us. Why? Well, sin's a big deal because sin is an offense to God. The offended see things differently than the offender. The one hurt sees things differently than the one who caused the hurt. The one who breaks the law sees things differently than the one who made the law. 
Sin is real and devastating to our souls, and we will never understand the magnitude of God's grace or salvation until we see the terrible effects of sin on our souls. Jesus didn't go to the cross for trivial reasons. He suffered because sin destroys everything good. Adam and Eve's sin caused the ground to be cursed. Before their sin, they lived in a paradise and could have lived forever in communion with God. But afterward, they brought pain and suffering into the world. God told Adam in Genesis 3, 17-19, Because you've listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and in toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread, till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We suffer today because sin came into the world. It is a big deal. The desire to sin leaves us doing many things that harm ourselves and harm others. We all face these problems, but there is a solution in the grace of God. Titus 3, 3-7 says, For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice, envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we've done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Because of Jesus on the cross paying the price for our sins, a door of salvation has been opened to cleanse us from sin, and to give us new birth in Christ. This new birth takes place when we put our faith in Christ, turn from that sin, and are baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Baptism takes us to the cross so that we can be saved. God's Word says in Romans 6 verses 3 to 7, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death. Therefore we have been buried with Him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with Him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died is freed from sin. Now in baptism, we unite with Christ in His death and resurrection. We're baptized into His death. We're crucified with Him in baptism. We're buried with Him and raised with Him in baptism. And just as Christ had new life when God raised Him from the dead, so God gives us newness of life when He raises us up with Christ. Baptism is no empty ritual. It is how God chose to unite us with Christ in His death, burial, and resurrection. Now, God works through the cross and through baptism to put the old man of sin to death so that we may be free to live in righteousness. God saves us and gives us newness of life by the washing of regeneration. The washing that regenerates is baptism. God actively works on us by uniting us with Christ in His death and resurrection. Colossians 2, 12-13 explains, Having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with Him through faith in the working of God, who raised Him from the dead, And he says, when you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. Baptism is not some meritorious work on our part. It's how we put our faith in the working of God. 
because God raised up Jesus after His death on the cross, we allow God to bury and raise us up with Christ in baptism. God buries us with Christ and makes us alive together with Him, having forgiven uh, us all our transgressions. And though we were dead in our transgressions and sins, He made us alive. He saved us and raised us up to walk a new life just as He did Jesus Christ. Now one day we'll stand before the great white throne to be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 20 verses 11 and 12 says, Then I saw a great white throne, and Him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Now everyone will be there from every nation, from every century. We cannot escape because there's no place we can go. The righteous will enter the joy of God, while the unbelievers and disobedient will be separated from God and His blessing. Salvation means living with God's blessing forever. Being lost means an eternity of anguish without God. Being with God is so much better than being without Him. I wouldn't want anyone to miss the opportunity to have their sins forgiven. Come to the cross, find forgiveness, and find life. That's what we all need to do, and I pray that you will. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, we're thankful for the love of Jesus and that He was willing to pay a price so that we could have our sins forgiven and be given new life. Help us to love You and serve You always. May Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some young people came to a wise older man and asked, When should we repent? The older man answered, Repent the day before you die. The young people asked, But we don't know when we will die. And the older man responded, Then repent today. Now if you take God and your sin seriously, then repent. You know, you can ignore sin and act like, well, it doesn't matter. But one day you'll have to face God and give an account for your sins. Romans 14, 12 says, So then each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Also, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9 simply says, The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. And how often people fool themselves and they lie to themselves saying, oh, I can do anything I want to do and it won't make any difference, my friend. It does to God and one day you'll have to face God. Hebrews 4 verses 12 to 13 reminds us, for the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from His sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. 
God will judge us all one day. And Christ is the only one who is able to save you. Why would you ignore the most important decision that you'll ever make? Today is the best day to leave that old man of sin behind and to follow Christ to a new life of righteousness, freed from the devastating effects of sin. The blood of Christ can cleanse your soul and cleanse your conscience. Ananias told Saul of Tarsus in Acts 22, 16, and, and now why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on His name. Baptism is an immersion in water in the name of Jesus Christ and the time when the blood of Jesus cleanses you from sin. Oh, respond to Jesus today. Well, we hope today's study about the sacrifice of Christ has stirred you to consider the, the soul the, that you have and the price He paid. Now, we're offering this free little book called Kneel at the Cross. It's free. And if you live in the United States and you want a printed copy or a CD of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way. Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. You can also download these lessons or newsletter online at our website, searchtv.org. There's also a schedule of our programs and a map with the location of churches that are in your area. You can also watch Search anytime on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Search TV Ministry. Oh, you can see a lot of our programs that are present and some in the past. We also offer free Bible correspondence courses. They're yours for the asking. There are several courses that you can take that will help you to know what God's Word actually teaches. Now, if you get a hold of us, don't worry. We're not here to try to uh, get your money or to extort anything from you. We're here to help you get to heaven. Please get involved with the Church of Christ. And if you're looking for a healthy biblical church home, we'll be glad to help you find one. Well, we'll be back next week, Lord willing, so keep searching God's Word with us. And do tell a friend about this program. Let them know that you're watching and encourage them to watch. It could make a big difference in their soul and their eternity. Well, as always, we say God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.